Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to lesson number 16 now. The database is an SQL video tutorial course. This is going to be on the topic of joins. How to join uh, between two different tables in a database. Very, very important lesson to be learned here. So pay attention, get your notebooks ready. Let's rock. So here's what you're going to learn in this lesson. We're going to learn about the most popular ways to join between two tables as well as a detailed breakdown of obviously each type of join and when to use them. That's a very important thing to learn is when to use which, because that was always something that confused me way back when, when I was learning this stuff for the first time. And we're also going to talk about obviously the syntax for each of these types of joins uh, so that you will be able to replicate them yourself. So I'm really, I mean, when it comes to joins, joins relate to uh, reading information. Okay, so reading information from a database, if you think about your CRUD stuff, uh, create, update, update, um, sorry, create, read, update, and delete, there we go. Um, this applies to the reading part of those four different um, uh, operations on a database. Anyway, so what is a join? So we talked, we have talked about uh, relationships between tables already via using foreign keys, um, which hopefully we're getting more and more familiar with and more comfortable with. And um, well, a join, also referred to as a table join, is the process of temporarily merging those two tables together. Okay, now when I say merge, I'm, I'm using that term loosely. I don't actually mean changing the whole schema of the databases or the database to like, you know, take the two tables and, and, and join them as one. And then, you know, when we're done reading the data, then they un, you know, merge themselves. I don't mean it in that regard. I just mean for the, for the process or for the purposes of just reading the data, you're just kind of mashing the data together between those two tables uh, for the duration of what, of, of actually just reading uh, the information. So we're not changing the schema, we're just uh, looking at it and, and making sense of it um, in, in a way that really makes a whole lot of sense. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when uh, we get into the actual visuals of, of doing the joins. So joining allows us to see related data in an easy to read format. Okay, that's what it's all about. We want to be able to perceive this data and to make sense of it in an easy to read way. And that's what joining allows us to do. So for example, let's say that we wanted to answer the question of at which address has person Trevor Page lived before? Okay, what address has Trevor Page uh, lived at before? So that's sort of a join between a person or a user table and an address table. Now we can perform a table join to answer this question, obviously by joining the person uh, and address tables together. Because with those two tables joined together, we'll be able to see at which address Trevor Page has lived before. Okay, because we're combining Trevor's information, so Trevor Page, which is part of the person table, with Trevor's address, which is part of the address table, and we'll join it together via its already existing relationship uh, via the foreign keys, or key that exists on the address table. Okay, because that will give a pointer back to the person table and we'll be able to know uh, where Trevor Page has lived before. Make sense? All right, so let's move forward. So what you naturally might ask yourself is what are the different ways to actually join uh, tables together? Well, there's three main ways to join tables, or rather join two tables together, uh, but you can't even get to the point where you're, you're joining multiple tables together. Um, so you're joining, you know, table A with table B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Uh, but typically in the cases that we're talking about now, we're just going to be talking about joining two tables together. However, it is completely normal to join more than two tables together. So just know that, uh, right out of the gate. It's perfectly fine if you're joining two or more tables together. But uh, in any case, there are three main ways to join tables together, which is the inner join, the outer join, and the cross join. Okay, inner, outer, cross. Now, inner and outer joins are by far the most used. I myself personally have actually never used a cross join in practice. And we'll get to the cross join at the end or near the end of this uh, tutorial. And I'll explain, uh, you know, why it is that I've never really used it before and why it doesn't really apply to, you know, many, many of the um, regular use cases out there. So just having said that, know that inner join and outer join are the two types of joins that you're going to be using most often. <clears throat> now, 
the outer joint itself breaks down into two different subtypes. It actually breaks down into three different subtypes, um, but these are the two most commonly used, and these are the ones that you can use inside of MySQL. So these two different subtypes are the left outer join and the right outer join, okay? Which is actually also known as left join or right join. Okay, you can drop the uh, the word outer out of there, but I don't want to overwhelm you with different, uh, you know, the different um, intricacies of how people talk about SQL stuff. But uh, yeah, left outer join and right outer join are the two different subtypes that you can use um, f of the outer join uh, type inside of MySQL. There's also something called a full outer join, um, but that is actually not, there's no keyword for a full outer join inside of MySQL, and like I said about the cross join, the full outer join is is not commonly used at all. Okay, I've actually never used the full outer join, and actually have very rarely used the right outer join. I typically only use the left outer join and the inner join. Okay, <laughs> a lot of a lot of joins going on here. So again, just to illustrate with the mouse pointer here, the two most common joins that you're ever going to be doing in your life are going to be the inner join, this one right here, and then the left outer join which is a subtype of the outer join. Okay, so really you're going to be worried about inner joins and left outer joins. Cool? Now, uh, and obviously the inner join and full join, or sorry, I should say cross join. I'm not sure why I said full join there. The inner join and the cross join do not break down into subtypes. Okay, just to explicitly say that, I don't really, I shouldn't need to explicitly say that, but I, I just want to so that you guys know that the only crazy one going on here is the outer join. That's the only one that sort of breaks down into subtypes. Okay, so let's talk about the inner join. Again, this is, like I said, this is one of the two that are the most commonly used. Inner join and left outer join are the two most common. So let's dive into the inner join. <clears throat> so performing an inner join on two tables returns the matching rows from both of those tables. Okay, so if you were to picture table A here in this sort of circle, this sort of Venn diagram here, if you're familiar with Venn diagrams, uh, table A is here. So all of the contents that can be represented inside of table A can be represented inside of this circle. So every single row, every single part, a piece of data that ever exists inside of table A is, uh, can be represented by this circle. Okay, and same goes for table B. Every single row that exists inside of table B, every single piece of data that will ever exist can be represented by this circle in table B. Okay, now you see there is a part where they join each other, where they, there is an intersection between these two tables. Okay, and this intersection is highlighted in, in the dark, whatever this color is, dark bluish, dark blue green. I'm not sure what color. I'm a guy. I don't really know colors very well. What is that? Teal? Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, this is the intersection between table A and table B, which means these are rows that match between table A and table B based on some criteria. Okay, so the key thing to note here is that there must be some condition to match data from both of those tables. This is the matching data based on some condition, some unknown condition. We don't know based on this diagram what the condition is, but we just know that there is some matching data between table A and table B. The matching condition in our case is the primary key from table A and the foreign key, which is table A's primary key, inside of table B. Okay, we've talked about this already. We know what primary keys and foreign keys are. We know about relationships and we know about how relationships are established inside of uh, SQL and databases uh, using foreign keys. So a match will only occur if the column from table A matches the column from table B. Now this is very generic talk and I am not really a fan of generic talk because um, I feel like when you talk in generics, uh, you're trying to you know account for every single possible uh, combination and, and permutation of what could possibly ever happen. And then in order to express that in a generic statement, it just becomes unteachable. Okay, You need to be on a next level of genius to be able to understand those things. So we're going to dive into real world examples here to illustrate these points. So... For example, uh, if table A contains a person ID of 1, okay, so person ID 1 would be table A, uh, but table B does not contain a person ID of 1, so table B would contain person ID being the foreign key that points to the primary key of table A, 
Uh, but table B does not contain that same person ID. So person ID 1 does not exist inside of table B. Then an inner join between the two tables would not return any results because there would be no matching row where person ID is equal to 1 between these two tables. Okay, that should help you a little bit to understand this, but let's obviously dive into even more examples because you're going to need more examples than just one to really fully understand this concept. So here I've broken it down. Instead of saying person and address, I'm using user and address because that's what we, we are used to seeing. So we have the user table and the address table. And I've done a uh, screenshot from my actual database using Toad. So this is a screenshot from Toad. Um, I have the, uh, you know, these rows populated in the user table and these rows populated in the address table. So we have user T page and JDoe and their corresponding passwords and user IDs. And then we have two addresses in the address table, uh, one from Toronto, Ontario, which is my hometown, and one from Chicago, Illinois, because I just decided to choose Chicago, Illinois. Why not? Uh, but what you should note here, what's interesting, is that the user ID for both of these rows points back to user ID number one. So the, what you need to note here is that user ID 2, which is over here, which is JDoe, does not have any corresponding rows in the address table. So given the data above, if we joined these two tables together, which rows would be returned? Okay, so again, let's assume that we're going to be joining on the user ID column because that is the one that we specified as being the foreign key. You can really only join two tables on the keys, the foreign keys and, and the, the, you know, the established relationship of the table. Whatever the relationship is, that's what you join on. You can't join, uh, you know, on user table, you can't join from username onto city, okay, because there's no logical um, correlation between username and city. The correlation is based on the relationship, which is the user ID column. So user ID exists here and user ID exists here. So that's what makes sense to join on. That's why relationships exist. Okay. So since an inner join only exactly matches rows from both tables, here's what we would see. Again, inner joins only match exactly what is in both tables. Let me go back one slide. Sorry if you're reading ahead there. I'm going back one slide. It only matches this inner part. So where table A exactly matches to table B. These are the only rows that we are going to see. If there is anything that exists over here in this part of the ether of our um, Venn diagram, which means that the, d the data exists in table B, but it does not exist in table, or sorry, table, um, the data exists in table A, but does not exist in table B. That means that we will not see the result returned. All we're going to see uh, that re is returned uh, by the result set is what is inside of the highlighted area in the middle. And vice versa. If we have data that exists in table B that does not exist in table A based on the relationship, then we won't see that show up either. So assuming all that of what we just said and assuming we have this data set here, what is returned when we perform an inner join? Well, look at look and see what we did here. So we have two rows total, and both rows uh, match to username T page. So you see T page is repeated twice. So we have T page passwords, whatever, whatever. So these two rows here are all for uh, user ID one, and then you see address here. Address ID iterates between one and two. So you have you know the uh, Toronto Ontario uh, line as well as the Chicago Illinois line. And then we have the user ID over here. And you see it puts the user ID 1 um, just because there already exists uh, a, t a column name with a name user ID. So this result set that it's returning is actually uh, the merging of the two tables together. So this is what I'm talking about with the merging um, and how it temporarily, again, it doesn't actually merge the data together as in terms of changing the um, structure of the database itself. This is just a representation of the data sort of merged together. Okay, so because this is a representation, these these columns don't really exist as they are listed here right now because it's just a representation of the uh, the merging of the data. So that's why we can get away with saying user ID one. Okay, the 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 column name user ID one does not actually exist physically in the database. It just exists as part of this representation of the merging of the data together. Okay, it's kind of a strange concept, but you'll, you'll again, you'll get used to it as you uh, use joins more and more. So 
you see how this works? We've joined these two tables together based on the user ID. So when we join based on the user ID, the only match is with user ID one over here and user ID one over here. So that is a resulting uh, matched set, user ID one and user ID one on both sides of the two tables, okay? So then we can accurately answer the question of where has the user Trevor Page lived? Now we can see Trevor Page has lived at Toronto, Ontario, and Trevor Page has lived in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Sound good? Sounds good. So that's the inner join. Okay. Uh, we'll get into the intricacies of the inner join versus the outer join in just a moment. But now I want to just dive into the outer join and give you uh, the, the rundown on what the outer join is all about. So go ahead and join me in the next lesson, which will be part two of this particular lesson uh, to continue our knowledge on uh, learning about, well, now going to be the outer joint. So I look forward to seeing you there.